All right, hey, uh, Mike McGrory, this is Mondays with Mike. Today we're going to kind of, you know, it, it's, uh, I don't know what, 25th of August, so we're working our way into fall, into winter. So this is the time of the year when people start thinking about buying, you know, when you're buying bare root plants, you have to buy them when they're dormant during the winter. So you're, that's typically somewhere around Thanksgiving all the way in, in, in through March. So when you buy bare root plants, people don't understand, they, they, they're often confused when I say heal something in or for the winter if you want to heal something in. So we're going to talk about a number of different ways and to kind of give you some things to think about. But when you heal something in, this is my potting soil pile and actually we often use this to heal things in. So to heal something in, and as an example, I've got this viburnum, uh, it's an Allegheny viburnum and it's in a container. I could just drop that in there in the, with the container, or if this were a bare root plant with no leaves, I would do the same thing, and then just throw some soil up around it. So it's it's simulated planting, but it's protected. Now, if I were going to heal that in, I would have got closer to the ground so it's not high. I'm probably seven, eight inches higher than the ground. And I've got a bunch of uh, lavender twist, red bud, and some Harry Lauder's walking stick that we're going to dig here after we get a freeze. We can't dig them until we get a good hard freeze where the temperature goes down below 30 degrees for several hours. When that happens, that triggers plants into dormancy. So we're gonna, we're gonna dig them then, and then once I have them all dug, I'm probably gonna bring them up here and I'll, I'll dig a big hole in this potting soil pile, and then I'll pack them in there real tight, bare root, and then as I put them in, I'll throw soil in there to cover the roots, because when you're healing something in, especially bare root, you want to make sure that there are no air pockets around the roots. You want the roots completely covered with soil. And last winter we, we had a bunch of uh, lavender twist red bud that we healed into this potting soil pile, but we kind of carved a little niche out of it. That's uh, north that way, west that way, so I would make a hole right in here so the prevailing winds aren't pounding on them and just get them in that way. So, so basically healing in is just a temporary planting of something. So. We're, I'm going to show you uh, a couple of different ways that we've done that and some strategies that I use to take advantage of ground heat. So we'll get to that here in a second. All right, now here, this is, a, this is an underground bunker that Amber often refers to as Jimmy Hoffa's grave. Um, if, we, if we mention Jimmy Hoffa's grave, everybody knows what we're talking about. So anyway, this is an underground bunker that I built a few years ago and I essentially for storing bare root plants because at the time I was buying a lot of bare root Japanese maples, smaller Japanese maples, and um, we will find a link to that video and we'll put that on the page as well. Uh, so anyway, but this, so this thing is, it, and what I'm doing is I'm taking advantage of the ground heat because I built these covers, so these covers are three and a half and another three inch and a half, so these things are about four and a half inches thick super super insulation factor with that dead air space in, inside of here and then this is about it's 24 inches deep actually so that's the depth right there and what I do if I if I get bare root plants during the winter providing the grounds not so frozen that I can't get these covers off which usually isn't the case because I can pry them off with a spud bar or something I'll come in here and I'll lay the bare root at an angle and you can see we've got a couple bags of Pro Mix laying there, and that's the only reason it's here is during the winter I put those bags in inside of this bunker so they don't freeze solid. Then if I need to heal something in, I can get in there, cover the roots up, leave the tops uncovered, and it's nice and moist in there, and it, it, it doesn't freeze. So that's, you know, that's one way of healing stuff in. Now, if you want to do this, you've got to have well-drained soil. So if your soil, you know, if you've got really heavy ground, it's not going to drain, this thing will probably fill up with water and never dry out. But I, I'm basically what I'm trying to show you is, is what the advantage of ground heat can do for you. So that's, uh, you know, I, I this worked great. I probably had, I know I've had hundreds of plants in here. I mean, several, probably close to a thousand because we had small Japanese maple seedlings, some dogwoods, we had grafted Japanese maples. And that other video, we'll put a link on this page to that other video because in that video I'm actually showing people the grafted plants and what we did, what we were doing with them at the time. So, all right, now I want to show you another way to take advantage of ground heat. All right, now 
Last summer, I built this little uh, three-sided, three-and-a-half-sided building for the donkeys. And last winter, we had the most horrendous winter ever, you know, just like everybody else in the country. And it was 15 below. And, and so I really wish I had built this thing differently than I did. I, I did exactly what people who had livestock told me to do. And they did fine, but it, you know, it wasn't super comfortable that by any means. So basically, what I'm going to do, I'm going to take advantage of, again, once again, I'm going to take advantage of ground heat. And right next to the donkey pen, I don't know if the sun is going to give you grief here or not, but right next to the donkey pen, there was a, we have a brush pile. When we cleared the pile, we pushed all the brush up there. And then when Ronnie dug the well, he piled a bunch of sand on top of that. So I'm going to build that donkey house right into that brush pile and take advantage of some ground heat. So let's go in and we'll take a look at that. Okay. All right, now this is this is the house that I built. It, it was three-sided, and then I, I put this, uh, I left this open. Then come fall, I made this little door. Put your butt there, Finnegan. So basically the door is just big enough for them to go through and get in and out of. And then we put, you know, like a, some kind of a drape material over there during the winter to hold in some heat. But when I originally built this thing, I wanted to go down into the soil, and somebody talked me out of it, and I, I kind of regret not doing that. So basically what I've done is over here, like I said, in that brush pile. And the reason I'm telling you this is because this structure that I'm building could easily double as a place to heal in plants and protect plants for the winter. So what I've done is I've come over here, and I just started this uh, a couple days ago. This is that the other side of that brush pile. So I've gone down probably about 30 inches below grade, and I'm going to build a house in there pretty much identical to the one we have, but it's going to it's going to be insulated, and I'll use two by sixes on the side. And then when I'm all done, I'm going to put as much soil around that thing and all the way up the sides as I possibly can, even around the front except for the very opening. So, and then we'll we'll. For the door, I'm probably going to use ropes and let them hang down, like an inch rope, and let it hang down vertically. That way they can get in and out, but all of that's going to trap some heat. But just being down in the ground like that is going to really, really keep them considerably warmer. So if I didn't have donkeys in there, I could easily pack that thing full of bare root plants, just put some mulch over the, or potting soil over the roots. And, and close it up and the plants would be perfectly content in there. So a lot of these nurseries, like a, a lot of the old uh, uh, farms have a cow barn that's double insulated and they're banked. Same thing, they just never freeze. The nurseries will build structures similar to this with a double wall. They don't heat them, but because they're down like 24, 30 inches into the ground, they don't freeze. So. Um, again, you know, taking advantage of ground heat is always a huge, huge advantage when you're working with plants. So the way this is right now, I could pack that thing full of bare root plants and just cover the roots and leave the tops exposed. They would be perfectly fine. Another thing that I have done when I bought bare root is I made just a frame out of 2 by 12s and I've taken my little bare root Japanese maples and put them in there and then put uh, mulch or potting soil or that pro mix over the roots left the tops exposed and the reason I do that is because I don't want the tops warm I don't want the tops budding out I want them to think it's still winter until it's actually spring here but we got to keep it, it doesn't hurt the roots to freeze as long as they are not dry so as long as you have all the air pockets removed and the roots completely covered then your plants are going to be pretty safe for the winter and a lot of times when I buy bare root, they'll ship it in, in February. Here in Ohio, it's still bitter cold. But if I wait till April, they're going to ship me plants that are just completely flushed out with new growth, and I really have no way to protect them because we have freezing weather all the way through April, so even into May sometimes. So that's why I try and get all my bare roots shipped to me in February, get it healed in, and then it's fine. The tops are exposed to the elements. The roots are somewhat protected. So anyway... I'll show you this donkey underground donkey house when I'm done with it, but think about plants because you can use a structure very similar to this for plants providing you've got some soil that drains or you can put in drainage. I'll actually put a, fr a French drain in the back of that just in case somehow a bunch of water gets in there and has a way to get out relatively quickly. But I'll also put a berm out here 
that will deflect any water that's flowing this way so it's going to run around this structure and not down in it. So, all right, I'm Mike McGrady, Mondays with Mike. I hope this is helpful.